In this demonstration, I'm going to look at using the regions of interest acquired on one image for the purpose of super, supervised classification and transferring those to another image to perform a supervised classification as well. So that way we can use post-classification change detection. So what I've got up on the screen here is my satellite image acquired on the 17th of October 2009 and if I bring up the regions of interest that I've already created for its supervised classification, I go to overlay region of interest, file and restore ROIs. Now if I click on classification there, um, it will restore those regions of interest and you'll be able to see in a number of locations where those regions of interest are located. So I've brought those up and I'm going to delete the empty one that's defaulted there as well. And now what I want to be able to do is to transfer those to another image and classify that similarly. Now it's really important here to ensure that your images have the same dimensions, both in terms of the number of rows, of co rows and columns of the image, but also in the pixel size. And if you're unsure of that, what you can do is to go up to the NV main menu and click on window and available files list. When you go to the available files list and you click on any of your files that you've got open, which for me is an image acquired in April 2010, June 2010 and October 2009, and if you have a look at the dimensions of the image, which, list, which is listed there, looking at rows, columns and bands, um, you'll be able to see the, the number of pixels that are contained in the image. You'll also see a little bit further down the pixel size there of 30 meters. Now what you're looking for is for those values to be exactly the same in each of your images in order to be able to transfer the regions of interest between your images. So if I click first of all on the 27th of, of April, we've got those dimensions and if I click then on the 14th of June, you'll see that those dimensions are exactly the same, so they've remained unchanged. And the same for October, again exactly the same dimensions. Now this is really important. If those aren't the same, then your regions of interest won't overlay your image. But as they are the same, we don't have a problem here. So we've got our regions of interest up. Now what I'd like to do is to perform the classification on my other two images. So it's quite simple to go to classification, supervised, and we're going to use the minimum distance supervised classifier at this stage. So we click on minimum distance and I've already performed the classification on my 17th of October image. So this time I want to try for the 27th of April. So I just click on that image and if I want to perform any spectral subsetting I can at this stage and I can also choose to mask any of the um, not a number values as well which I would choose to do that. And once we've done that, we can click OK. So if I was to already, if I was to select, choose um, creating that mask, that would go ahead and create it at this stage. But I won't do that as I've already done it previously. But I'll click OK here and move to the next step. Um, what I want to do is is select all the classes here, so I can select individual ones that I'm going to use for the classification, or I can click on the Select All Items button, which will choose all of them for me. I'm going to leave all the defaults the same there and I'll um, output both the, the result file of my classification, I can also output the rule image. And remembering also that you can choose to, to preview your classification using the preview button down the bottom and then click OK when that's complete. And once you've run that, you can then go through and run the exact same process on the 14th of June image and that will that will therefore give you three classifications based on each of those image dates. So if I was to open those images now, we'll go through and open the classification for the 27th of April and holding the control key, also the, the 17th of October and my 14th of June classification there. Okay, so I, I have each of those classifications now available in my available bands list. So if I, I now go ahead and look at, for example, the 27th of April image, I can just load that simply to a new display, and that's bringing up my classification there. And once again, you can check the classification by right-clicking and going to cursor locational value, 
um, and moving your cursor around. And remember it's useful to open the original image that you've classified from as well to make sure that the classification is, is making sense there. So the idea here is to compare the classifications qualitatively and make sure that the classification has been has performed well. And if not, you might need to go back in and redefine your regions of interest. The final step there that we'll go through then is just to perform a, a smoothing operation on those images so that they don't look quite so speckled, I guess. Um, to do that, we simply go to classification, post-classification and majority or minority al analysis input the individual file, so for example I might put in the 27th of April file and click OK and I'd like to smooth all of those classes so again I can s select all items there there's no, no need to do so for the unclassified though if we change that to a kernel size of 5x5 five five, so that it's pro providing a decent level of smoothing but not too much and keep that on majority and again we'll enter the output file name there so once I've run that, I can then open the image file and if we look at the output file there I'm just loading this to a new display we now see that the, the boundaries between each of your classes are a lot smoother compared to the original um, classified image here so if I was to look at the two of those forming a geographic link or just a standard link on either of those images you can see that the the one on the left has been smoothed with the 5x5 filter and it just appears a, a little bit less speckled and will be much better when we want to convert it to vector for further analysis in our GI.